So the difference between something being a conspiracy and then coming out as truth seems to be just about a few years these days, if my calculations are correct. And this latest admission of truth is just another notch on our conspiratorial belts. The U.S. government, specifically under Biden and Harris's administration, was asking Meta and other social media platforms to censor and suppress information in 2021. And if you're rolling your eyes, you're saying, yeah, Brett, obviously, I already know that. Well, a lot of people didn't or they didn't believe it, even after whistleblowers exposed everything in 2021, as I'm sure many of you guys remember. But Zuckerberg himself has finally admitted to everything. And all of this, in my opinion, is very in line with this massive rebrand that Zuck has been undergoing. Before we dive into this story, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the comment section channel if you have not already, and of course, hit that notification bell so that you never miss one of our uploads. So on Monday, in a letter to Jim Jordan and the House Judiciary Committee, Zuckerberg laid everything out. Charlie Kirk posted about the letter saying, breaking, Mark Zuckerberg in a letter to Chairman Jim Jordan and the House Judiciary Committee writes that he, quote, regrets working with the Biden-Harris administration, which repeatedly pressured Meta's team for months to censor COVID posts, including satire and humor. Quote, I believe that the government pressure was wrong, and I regret that we were not more outspoken about it. Zuckerberg redemption arc. Well, at this point, that is still up for debate, but we'll talk about that later. In this letter, Zuckerberg wrote, in 2021, senior officials from the Biden administration, including the White House, repeatedly pressured our teams for months to censor certain COVID-19 content, including humor and satire. I'm sure we all remember that because I'm sure that many of us were victims of Meta's disinformation campaign. Going on, he said, and expressed a lot of frustration with our teams when we didn't agree. Ultimately, it was our decision whether or not to take the content down and we own our own decisions, including COVID-19 related changes we made to our enforcement in the wake of this pressure. I believe the government pressure was wrong, and I regret that we were not more outspoken about it. I also think that we made some choices that, with the benefit of hindsight and new information, we wouldn't make today. Like I said to our teams at the time, I feel strongly that we should not compromise our content standards due to pressure from any administration in either direction, and we are ready to push back if something like this happens again. I mean, guys, what a transformation. If you've been on Facebook, if you have engaged with basically any meta platforms, you know that they are the worst. You can't post anything even remotely controversial without getting dinged with a misinformation flag. Stop! You violated the law. Because not only is he calling out Biden and our government, but he's saying that they will never do this again. And the other thing that I really admire in this letter is that he's taking accountability. He's saying, yes, they pressured us, but at the end of the day, we did make that choice and I won't do it again. And this is just a far cry from the Facebook that we have come to know. Obviously, this letter has gone mega viral. The news has spread basically across every social media platform. I'm seeing a bunch of my lib friends even comment on it on Instagram. And a lot of people, especially on the right, feel vindicated and feel a lot of relief. One person said, I hope that Zuckerberg has reformed. Look how different X is and how we can get information out there. If Facebook was free speech too, the game would be completely different. Another person said, it's late, but this is a rare Zuck dub. But many people do not share this sentiment. For a lot of people, they are not ready to forgive Zuckerberg, understandably, especially while conservatives are still being slapped with limited reach and being put in misinformation jail on Instagram for literally posting nothing. But you know what? This is a start. Somebody commented and said, zero sympathy or credit at this point. Another person said, it is actually unbelievable that this POS admitted this. Another person said, nope, just like there is no Fauci redemption arc. Another person said, I wish I could believe or trust him, but I can't. And Charlie Kirk replied to this guy and he said, I think that we should root for our American industry leaders to get this stuff right. It's appropriate not to trust and be skeptical given what's happened, but I would be overjoyed to watch Zuckerberg emerge as a free speech champion. And I fully, completely 100% agree with Charlie here. You do not need to fully trust Zuckerberg. You probably shouldn't fully trust Zuckerberg, but you should be rooting for his integrity and his honesty and his support of free speech because that is a net good thing for literally everyone for the sake of our country, if anything else, because this has been going on for years and there has been no accountability. And this is a huge, huge step in the right direction. I mean, just look at Secretary Mayorkas lying about this under oath two years ago in 2022. Your own quadrennial review, which was just reported in the press, says that disinformation is going to be the new focus at DHS. The Quad Review says that DHS plans to target, I'm quoting now, inaccurate information domestically on a wide array of subjects, including, quoting, the origins of the COVID-19 pandemic, the efficacy of COVID-19 vaccines, racial justice, U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, and the nature of U.S. support from for Ukraine. Now, one thing that is wild to me when I've been reading the comments about the Zuckerberg letter is that there are so many people on the left who are excusing this behavior from Meta and from the Biden administration because COVID-19 was, you know, a special circumstance. You know, people were dying. We had to protect people. And to that, I say, 
you are literally falling into their trap. Benjamin Franklin once said, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. And that is exactly what happened in 2020 and 2021, not just with how big tech was weaponized, but also with the lockdowns. April 16th, 2021, Rob Flaherty at the White House circulates a Zoom meeting invitation to Twitter employees stating White House staff will be briefed by Twitter on vaccine misinformation. We have Example after example of this administration coordinated, apparently, according to a federal court, by your agency, pressuring, coercing social media companies to engage in censorship. It's wild. Is that constitutional? That is unequivocally false. We literally have all of the emails. We have had the whistleblowers, and he sat there with a straight face and said, no, we never did any of that. We didn't coerce them, we didn't pressure them, we didn't do anything. Then what are the Zoom calls? Then what are the emails? Then what is Zuckerberg saying? I mean, guys, it is infuriating. I mean, they forced the hands of big tech time and time again, and then they lied to the American people through their teeth. And it is finally, finally being exposed on a broader scale. But I mean, at this point, what's new? We're being lied to by literally everybody. All of these big corporations, all of these big industries, they're lying to us down to the foods that our dogs eat. Because if another vet tells me that a certain huge brand of kibble is the best option for my dogs, I'm going to lose my mind. And that is why I care so much about what Rough Greens is doing. Rough Greens is a supplement for your dogs that contains all the necessary vitamins, minerals, probiotics, omega oils, digestive enzymes, and antioxidants that your dog needs every single day. Things that they are most likely not getting from that dry, gross, conventional kibble. And what I love most about Rough Greens is that they make health for your dogs accessible. You don't have to go out and buy the new, fancy, expensive dog food. You can just sprinkle Rough Greens on their food every single day and you'll be taking a huge step for your dog's health. Dog owners everywhere just rave about Rough Greens because it supports gut health, it supports healthy joints, improves bad breath, it boosts energy levels, and so much more. Obviously, we are we eat, and that goes for your dogs as well. The founder of Rough Greens, Dr. Dennis Black, is so confident that his products will improve your dog's health that he is offering my viewers that free Jumpstart trial so that your dog can try it too. And that free Jumpstart trial bag can be at your door in just a few business days. So go to roughgreens.com slash Brett or you can call 877-66-MY-DOG to redeem that offer. Again, that's roughgreens.com slash Brett or call 877-66-MY-DOG today. But it's important to note that this wasn't just about COVID and medical misinformation, kind of like what you heard Holly talk about, that they also wanted to expand that to Afghanistan and Ukraine and racial justice. And of course, the Hunter Biden laptop story. Because in that same letter, Zuck came out and said that he similarly regrets censoring the Hunter Biden laptop story and literally says, I now know this was not Russian disinformation. In a separate situation, the FBI warned us about a potential Russian disinformation operation about the Biden family and Burisma that led up to the 2020 election. That fall, when we saw a New York Post story reporting on corruption allegations involving then Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden's family, we sent that story to fact checkers for review and temporarily demoted it while waiting for a reply. It has since been made clear that the reporting was not Russian disinformation. Wow, imagine that crazy idea, and that in retrospect, we shouldn't have demoted the story. We have changed our policies and processes to make sure that this does not happen again. For instance, we are no longer temporarily demoting things in the U.S. while waiting for fact checkers. And another important thing to note that you might have gotten from this letter is that this wasn't just happening under the Biden-Harris administration. These three letter agencies were pressuring Meta even under Trump. And in my opinion, probably to keep him out of office, which is obviously not a surprise if you've paid attention to how the FBI and its kind has been weaponized against him. Now, speaking of another person that the three letter agencies hate, RFK Jr. recently went on Tucker and they spent a bulk of the interview talking about censorship, specifically Meta, and how that has been such a crux in RFK's campaign. And what we learned is that Facebook and these other social media companies were being pressured, if not forced, which is really what was happening, to comply with these demands and change the rules for the US government, or they would be stripped from the protective measures of their company's liability. And all of this is legal, and it's part of Section 230 of the Communications Act. Just listen. Those agencies and other agencies, including the health agencies like CDC, were given access to go into the social media sites and change posts and slow walk things and uh, and shadow ban posts. That It was part of that effort. They removed my Instagram account. I had almost a million followers. I They say it was for misinformation, but they could not point to a single post that I ever made that was factually erroneous. It's insane. It is certifiably insane and so corrupt. In the email chain, you can see Facebook pushing back at the White House and saying, well, wait a minute, he's not, um, this isn't misinformation. This is, this is not factually erroneous. What they're saying is actually true. And they had to invent a new word, which was called malinformation, 
which is information that is factually true, but nevertheless inconvenient for the government. And that became disinformation, misinformation, and malinformation. It is so, so dangerous. We just saw Tim Walz go on TV and say that he doesn't really care about free speech. So this shouldn't be surprising to literally anyone, but considering who is now running on the Democratic ticket, I think we know that this can get a lot worse. And just hearing this from RFK, it is wild. Like they completely decimated his campaign. It is incredible that he garnered the support that he did and got all those millions and millions of signatures while being deplatformed and blocked from basically every media outlet except Fox. Now, even though Zuckerberg and Meta did have a choice, as we saw there, and obviously they were sort of pushing back on some things, it wasn't an easy or simple one. The easiest thing to do was to comply, which is what they did for literally years. And this letter is not the first time that he's spoken about it. On an appearance with Joe Rogan, he said this about the laptop story. So we took a different path than Twitter. Um, I mean, basically, the background here is the FBI, I think, basically came to us, uh, some, some folks on our team. It was like, hey, just so you know, like, you should be on high alert. There was the, we, we thought that there was a lot of Russian propaganda in the 2016 election. Bruh. We have it on notice that basically there's about to be some kind of dump of, of um, uh, uh, that's similar to that. So just be vigilant. If something is reported to us as potentially... Um, misinformation, important misinformation. We we also have this third party fact checking program because we don't want to be deciding what's true and false. The distribution on Facebook was decreased, but people were still allowed to share it. So you could still share it, you could still consume it. So when um, you say the distribution is decreased, in, it, it got shared. It, how does that work? It basically the ranking in newsfeed was a little bit less. We've experienced that. If you know anything about what Daily Wire has been fighting behind the scenes and also not behind the scenes, where they just you know shut off all of your distribution, suddenly you're getting absolutely no views. There's nothing you can do. They're telling you that they're doing that, and they can't really explain why, but they're doing it because it's safe and it's the right thing to do. A lot of people are still able to share it. We got a lot of complaints that that was the case. Um, you know, obviously this is a hyper political issue. So depending on what side of the political spectrum, you either think we didn't censor it enough or censored it way too much. Now, even in that interview, which was a while ago, I feel like there was like a tinge of truth coming out through Zuckerberg where he was like, well, they said that it was disinformation and he was definitely treading lightly. But as Charlie Kirk said in his original tweet, it all seems like this is part of a big arc for Zuckerberg because what he's saying now, what he's doing now, his boldness, is not that guy that we just saw on Rogan. That is a completely different man, especially because at the end of this letter to Jim Jordan, he basically said that he would not be getting involved in the upcoming 2024 election because he didn't want to play the same meddling role that he played in 2020. Somebody commented and said, I actually don't think that Zuck is a bad guy. I think that Meta has a lot of bad Democrat actors. He needs to take a stand and clean house. And listen, he might do that. I have no idea. Like he genuinely seems like a completely different person than he was in 2020. Just last month in a shocking display, he said in an interview that Trump was badass, literally something that might have been censored on his platform in 2020. Just watch. Yeah, I mean, seeing Donald Trump get get up after getting shot in the face and pump his fist in the air with the American flag is one of the most badass things I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it's just such a good clip. Number one, because obviously that is true. Everyone knew that that was badass. But number two, because it's like Zuckerberg is saying that. Even Zuckerberg agrees that that was epic. After everything we have seen Facebook and Meta do, that is just wild. And he didn't just say this on an interview and then let it go. He actually called Trump directly after the assassination attempt to talk and to apologize. I was called by Mark Zuckerberg yesterday, the day before, on this same subject. And he actually apologized. He said they made a mistake, et cetera, et cetera, and they're correcting the mistake. I mean, genuinely, this is an insane transformation because Zuckerberg was one of the people that was leading the charge against Trump for the last eight years. Like he went from this AI looking robotish nerd bending a knee to the whims of his peers and to the liberal government, whining and complaining about Trump to a man who seems like he's starting to push back against groupthink and is starting to really lead. He's also gained some weight. He's gained muscle. He's gotten tan. He started working out. He started raising organic cattle in Hawaii. He's wearing chains of all things, which is just the most shocking part of all of this. And then in probably the best example, his 4th of July posts went from this, which obviously we've all made fun of, to this, which is so much more iconic. And I would say that all of that is connected. He is happier, he's healthier, he's found a brotherhood through UFC and martial arts, he's getting bolder, all of that has to be connected. And so for his personal sake and his family's sake and his happiness and well-being, and for the sake of our country, I hope that this all continues. Well guys, I hope you liked this episode. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. See you guys next time.